Greetings, programs. This is Wretch. Welcome back to Citizen Sleeper. And in the last episode, guys, we found ourselves under the gun, both figuratively and literally. A bounty hunter by the name of Ethan arrived on the station, found us fairly easily due to the tracker that we have, and was going to take us back to our former corporate masters. However, he had kind of a strange change of heart, and he decided that he was going to spend time on the station running up a large bar tab. And as long as we keep paying that bar tab, I guess we're going to have a little bit of a reprieve from uh, being taken away from here. So he is currently hanging out at the Compressor Club. Um, every cycle it fills up, and once this fills up, we have to pay however much money he owes. I'm not sure what how much that's going to be, but I think we should probably keep an eye on our cryo for right now. Um, we also finished our project here on... Well, we got the sidereal bridge now at the docks. Sidereal fit up. Your work as a junior tech... Holy crap. That is a lot of cycles. Um, has qualified you to work in the team handling the final tech fit up of the sidereal horizons bridge. A vast job. Yeah, you're telling me. Okay. So, I know what we'll be working on here for a bit. But we've got no action dice right now. We took um, one of our stabilizers. Let's go ahead and crash out and see what the next day brings. Or the next cycle, rather. What are days as far as this station goes? Ooh. Okay, well, that could have gone better. But we'll try and make the best of it. Um, ooh, we had a scrap freighter show up. Do you have a ship mind? The freighter crew are eager to get their payload into the Ord Exchange and they'll pay a wage to anyone willing to help them, or any. Buy some scrap. Eh, not what I'm looking for. Don't need scrap right now. What we need are ship mine components. Does it actually say how much money he's ran up? Nope. <laughs> eh, it's worth a shot. Well, let's go ahead and have our first uh, shift here. Actually, what we need to do before anything else... Oh, we're going to run afoul of that hunter again, aren't we? Haven Age Gates. We've got the data. Hmm. I'm seeing if there's anything that we can waste our our one dot on. Doesn't look like it though. Unless we want to take out this uh Yadigan agent, and I don't want to really waste that. Hmm. Well, I believe this is what we need to do in order to uh, help out Fang, and Fang's crucial to us getting this tracker off. So maybe we just need to go ahead and get to it. We won't get any cryo out of it, but... There we go. Haven Age Cipher. Those familiar threads wrap around you, bind you, test you. Entity, submit. Hunter's strange head bobs in your vision. Your ally in the sealed dock cannot save you. In that globed head you see whirling strings of data. So many spinning there that... They threaten to tear through the thin skin and whip out into the void around. What happened to this creature? The threads squeeze and you lose any sympathy you might have had. You must escape. Oh, so we had an opportunity to break free and now we have to strike. You lash out once more, pushing Hunter back, severing threads that regrow as fast as they're broken. As you slip away, you realize you have to find a way to deal with Hunter once and for all. This is getting too dangerous. Absolutely. 
Okay, well that took a bit of that. All right, let's go ahead and back out. Go to... Oh, wait a minute, that's over here. Aha! And we have access. And that didn't wake up Hunter, fortunately. Haven H port H33. Slip Ripper Worm. An open port sits waiting for you to slot in a Ripper Worm. What will it find in there? One way to find out. Shipyard server slotted. Minus one whipper, Ripper Worm. We got an, I think we got another encrypted key and some more data. I think that was pretty much it for right now. Okay. Is that something we have to go back and... Oh, Fangs Bay is now available to us. Shipyard Rip. Fangs Ripper Worm is installed, but it'll take a few cycles to run through the closed network. Ah. So we'll hang out there. Um, It'll actually be done. I don't know when Fang's going to actually work on our tracker. But he'll be done the exact same time our debt with Ethan is up. Hmm. All right. Well, we'll we'll deal with that particular problem when it arrives. In the meantime, let's look at everything else that we have to do here. We can go into another area right now, but I kind of want to see what else is available. Um Oh yeah, we got the bar. Should we go ahead and throw in our four right now for the bar shift? Because I think that should be enough to hopefully finish the good service. Let's see. Big bucks, no whammies? Oh, well, that could have been better. One more to go. Got a little bit of money out of it. You know what? I think we're going to go ahead and open that low-end gate. We're kind of running out of things to do, and we need that ship mined, and I don't think we need to keep on waiting for freighters to pop in, you know? Oh, um, okay, the dock is... Yeah, free. Haven Age offices. We definitely need to go ahead and work here on the bridge. And that'll get us some cryo as well. It's dangerous. But we do have... Gives us a three. Hey! Cool. I'll definitely take that. Let's grab some food at the bar. You know, we may want to go ahead and finish up, like do another bar shift, and see if that uh, finishes up what we need. Low end toll. Let, let's see what's available once we open this, and then we'll make that call. After some spacer caused some trouble in the low end, Yadigan have imposed a toll for entry. No one gets in without paying. Okay. Is that going to open a brand new? Oh, yes. The Free Spoke. Towering Transit. And we got more stories. Founders Gap. Lem and Mina's Unit. Mm -hmm. The Ramshackle Residential District. We got so much stuff now. All right. Um, And these are all going to lead to new stories. I'm kind of afraid about that though because if it if it starts a um 
If it starts cycles that count down, we could be in a bit of trouble. I'll tell you what. Let's go ahead and work one or two more shifts here. We got 50-50 chance here. And... Do I want to do that, though? I mean, our, our dice are, are garbage. So we kind of don't have a choice in the matter. What if I just use the one dice? The one dice is still 50-50, huh? No risk it, no biscuit. Hey! Cool. I like it. Let's go talk to Tala. The... Girol slides from the bottle into the lumpy recycled glass, a pale grassy yellow under the overlook's warm lights. The spacer nods and takes the drink, bringing it up to their face in both hands like an offering bowl. This is the good stuff, the stuff Tala says is aged in wooden casks, stored in some closed-off part of the old station, among corroded wires and softly looping systems, though sometimes it is hard to tell if Tala is joking. Either way, you like pouring this stuff. It gets on your fingers, and if you rub them together, you can smell the mossy drink, cut through with aniseed, mushrooms, wood. As the alcohol evaporates, we are looking for mushrooms. You like those who order it, too. The aged garole is kept beneath the bar, open to order only by those who know it's there, like the quiet spacer sitting at the bar right now. Let's watch the spacer. They're far enough away that you can freely watch them as you close the bottle and tuck it beneath the bar. You call them a spacer because they bear the hallmarks. Pale, vac-suited, bird-boned, and hunched beneath the weight of the station's spin gravity. But the closer you look, the less you see a type. Pale eyes, almost gray, but kind. Delicate fingers that lightly drum the bar as if it was an instrument. A shock of black hair almost covering a forehead scar. Scars are something you have learned to value. They're what marks out your body from the hundreds, or maybe thousands, who knows, of similar models that rolled out of S and Arp's biolabs. You find yourself rubbing one on, on your forearm, a rough little split, something that on the good days you might think of as a mark of defiance. Suddenly you hear a heavy clunking at the door. It creaks open and a huge cylindrical metal tank tumbles through, slamming into the floor. Oh shit. Tala breezes in from behind it, a whirl of hair and bright eyes. Shit, shit, shit. Tala? Sleeper. She ducks behind the bar and comes over. Can you help me with this? You look at the huge metal tank suspiciously. Uh, I'm coming. You come around the bar and get to one side of the tank. Okay, says Tala. On my count. One, two, three. You both heave the tank up to standing. Somehow. You hold it in place, struggling to keep it steady. Where's this going? In the back, comes a voice from behind the tank. Somehow you manage to lug the huge thing into the back room, where you place it in one corner, dwarfing the rest of the contents of the small room. As you do, you hear a crunch. You stand back and look at the expired rations oozing out from under the tank. Oh, shit. Tala looks at you apologetically. I, I know you liked those. That's okay. Oh, we're not going to be able to get food from here anymore. You push the crushed rations to one side. That's the end of that. Tala looks exhausted and rubs her shoulders. Francis, I swear to... Francis? Francis. I mentioned him already. My guy on the door. Deals with suppliers. Tall. He was supposed to be back from Entian's up at the Greenway by now. Back with our Garol. She leans back against the tank. Seems like he's got lost again. Or joined the Haifa commune. We need that girl. 
There's four other bars near here, and the spacer sure as hell don't come to the overlook for the ambience. She looks through the open door to check if anyone can hear her. She knocks on the hollow tank. So I'm taking matters into my own hands. She smiles. Welcome, sleeper, to the Overlook Distillery. You look around the dank back room. It needs some work. She picks at some paint flaking from the metal walls. Well, I might need some help, though. She shrugs. You up for it? She knocks on the tank again. Could be fun. Happy to help. Okay. She grabs you by the shoulders. I'm excited. She turns around and looks at the tank. I reckon we chop this thing in half. One half for fermentation and the other we turn into a still. We'll also need to gather the ingredients. She turns back and looks at you. You look more like a chopper than a gatherer. She smiles. So how about you build the still and tub while I work on the rest? Oh wait, sleeper, I have an idea. Tala is grinning now and it's making you nervous. To make up for the rations, how about we put a kitchen in here too? A kitchen? Uh-huh. I always wanted to serve food. She turns back to the tank. Oh, this is going to be great. She says to herself, you look at the dented tank in the bare room. At least she has vision. Tala nudges you out of the back room and closes the door. As you go back to the bar, you hear the banging and thumping begin. The spacer finishes up their drink and nods in your direction as they leave. You can't quite tell if it's a gesture of sympathy or good luck. So much for a quiet shift. Oh, new drive discovered. Alright. So does that mean that drive is completed? Nope. It's like I said, that insta karma. We're gonna get it, eventually. So much activity. Oh, okay. So, we can always go through here to get some money, which is great. But we can also build the still, and this is also a arduous task. Engineer. Hmm. Okay. Well, I think it's time we go ahead and see... What other trouble we can get into over here? Let's do it. Um, let's start with... Ooh, this is the unit where we... Unlock apartment. You find the entrance to the apartment. It's passkey symbol obscured beneath layers of graffiti. Who lives here? One way to find out. The lock clunks open, the metal door swinging inward into the dark. As you push the door open, the automatic lights flicker on inside the apartment. They reveal yellowing plastic panels, the curved shape of wall-mounted utility units, the detritus of a routine life arranged on every surface. Now this is the key that we found in the uh, stabilizer vial that Dr. Sabine handed to us. You step inside clicking the door shut behind. The amber light of the aging fixtures glaze everything with pale orange. The work surfaces hold a variety of objects, indistinct in the dull lighting. A pale blue light drifts from a doorway at the end of the room. Oh, um, inspect the surfaces? Smudges through the thin layer of dust suggest a recent, rare, and hurried visit. They trace a path to the water dispenser the auto wash, then to a cabinet still half open. On the shelf sits an empty pill case. You cross the cramped utility room, with its auto wash, dispensers, water closet, toward the doorway. Through the, though the do doorway is dark, or through the doorway is a dark, warm room, lit only by the faint glow of a terminal screen. Yeah, definitely inspect the room first. A bunk is tucked into the wall. The blankets ruffled. A wall desk glitters with rows of vials and containers. A briefcase lab sits open, loaded with rows of reagents and compounds you do not recognize. In comparison, this room is clean, ordered, and controlled. 
As you approach, there's a crackle from somewhere in the dark. Sleeper. Sabine's voice shakily echoes through the apartment. Welcome to my home. I'm sorry I can't be there. I have to have to make alternate arrangements. You hear rattling noises and static. I was able to record this message, but I don't dare show my face. Something is happening within Yadagan. I no longer trust them. Their voice becomes distant, slipping behind the backroom noise. I have something to ask of you. I want you to get me out. Yatagan was supposed to hide me, to protect me. After everything happened, I was desperate. And then after that, I was too tired to care. A noise like waves over the recording. But I'm done with them now. I want out. Screw the debt. But I need insurance. Something I can hold against them. I have my suspicions, but I can't be sure. I need information. And as you know, you need me. A pause. Something clicking in the dark. This isn't a threat, but you have to understand my position here. Another pause. I know sleepers. I've been here before. I can help you, but not with Yatikin's noose around my neck. Get me data. Get me information. Give me something I can use against Yatagan. Then I can get out, and you can get what you need. Please. Waves of static cut into Sabine's voice. Bring it here to my terminal. I'll get to it when I can. You look around the tiny room, and try to imagine Sabine living here. Working at the desk, sleeping in the bunk, blinking to the terminal in the dark. The recording cuts the static filling the room with its white hiss, then silence. Okay. You sit in front of the humming terminal and hit a few keys. Sabine has left an access port open, but the rest is encrypted, locked away behind passcodes. It seems Sabine may not trust you as much as they want you to think. Who does Sabine need to hide from? And what debt do they owe to Yadigan? You try to assemble the pieces, but too many are missing. The only thing you know is that without Stabilizer, your body will die. You glance at the briefcase lab on the desk, its glassware glinting in the dark. You turn away and leave, the door clunking shut behind you. Back in the corridor, you notice the scrawled graffiti of a blade on the opposite wall. Yatagun. You feel yourself being drawn into something you don't quite understand. New drive. Okay, is this Yadigan data? Uh-huh. So that's what that's for. Makes me wish that I hadn't grabbed all that, but we only need three. So that's that's doable. Now let's head into the low end itself. Block maintenance. Maintained by their residents, the ramshackle blocks are always in need of repairs. Helping out is a good way to make friends. Play Tabla. The clack of filter caps can be heard in every concourse in the low end as the residents play rotating rounds of this game for cryo. Hmm. Low Ender, no one knows you here. You'll need to change that if you want access to the low end's residents and facilities. I like facilities. Cool. Um, we got Lem and Mina's unit do a little bit of babysitting, and then we got the free spoke, and then the founder's gap. Babysit Mina. Lem can't work shifts in the shipyard unless someone watches Mina. You two seemed to get along last time, and Lem is desperate. <laughs> okay. Cool. A ticket out. And the free spoke. Enter the spoke. A tangled network of service passages and makeshift tunnels cut through the spoke, as if it were a hive. There are no maps here. 
Blistered with precarious elevators and stairways, the spoke can be navigated from the outside, but the climb requires bravery. The spoke is layer after layer after layer of dense urban fabric. The only way to explore it is vertically. Good lord, so much to do! Pay for passage. To reach the Greenway, you need to pay for a pass. A practice invented by the spacers moored here. They call it Founder's Ferry. Okay. So, what do we want to use our last little bit? Well, actually, that should give us more access to things here on the grid, huh? And more way to get uh, Yadikin data. So let's go ahead. And before we do anything else, we'll see if there's more. Oh, we got another keynote as well. This personal terminal is empty apart from a single high-level encryption locked behind access protocols. So that'll give us access to something else. Another Yadikin agent. Well, here. Do we want to... Well, no, we have to wait a few turns for Fang to get that data. So we just basically need to stay frosty and make sure we don't uh, wake up anyone again, or at least get a ship mind. Or no, the ship mind is the primary... primary issue. There we go. little bit of data to start us out. It's like we only got three there, so... Cool. Alright, that is everything. I think we're about to lose a dice, though, unfortunately. Due to the damage that we took from the hunter. We still have that extra stabilizer, but I don't want to use it until we're down to three. And then we're just going to be in a bit of an issue. Okay, um... I'm still wanting to look at our completed drives. I feel like we should have more points than what we have. Alright, end the cycle. Good dice, please. Good dice. Okay, better. I, I'll, I'll take it. But another thing to keep in... Uh, we have to keep in check here is the fact that our food... We now have to go to Emphasis Stall, and this is for 15 cryo, and that is three, I believe. Three hunger gets taken care of. Or maybe more. I am not sure. Okay, Fangs is filled up. Okay, it only took... It's only going to take three turns for Fangs to complete. The less we have to deal with Ethan, the better. Because I feel like a lot of this stuff's going to get pricey. But we do have some stuff that we can do, guys. We can go into the grid. Um, we can babysit Mina. We can make ourselves known to the low-end district. We've got the still... We've got the work here on the Sidereal Bridge. I mean, we're... Things are... Like, a lot of stuff's happening. So we just kind of decide where to pick our battles and what to hit. Oh yeah, and there's also the Free Spoke, too. Whew. But I hope you guys have enjoyed it. We'll go ahead and end the episode here. And uh, we'll pick it up with this current cycle and see where the dice take us. If you guys like the episode, please leave, leave a like down below. Subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment. That'd be a big help. And we'll see you next time. Later days, everyone.